Welcome to this module of Professor Messer's free CompTIA a certification training course. I'm your host, James Messer. And in this module, we're going to learn about upgrading and troubleshooting the basic input-output system of our computer, the BIOS. And this, you would think, would be a very casual thing to do. But in fact, there's some very specific things that are extremely important when upgrading the BIOS. And hopefully, you're going to learn from mistakes that I have made when I have upgraded my BIOS. Yes, there's a story to come. So this comes from our 220-601, section 1.1. This is really the only uh, part of the CompTIA certification requirements that mentions anything about the BIOS and the CMOS, which is unusual considering how important and very basic this particular piece is. There's not a lot of questions on the exam about it, but it does touch on understanding and knowing what the principles are of using the BIOS and the CMOS and the firmware that that's inside of your computer. Today we're going to learn about why you would even upgrade the BIOS of your PC and why that's important. We'll also go into troubleshooting with the BIOS and how you would use the BIOS to troubleshoot things on your system. Before you do any upgrades, there's some certain precautions you need to make. And I'll tell you everything you're going to need to do and need to know prior to performing any upgrade of your BIOS. And finally, we'll step through an upgrade process, or I'll give you a feel for what's involved for doing a BIOS upgrade. And you may be surprised at just how simple and basic doing something like that is. So let's start with why you would upgrade the BIOS. BIOS upgrades are a pretty big deal. This isn't something that you would want to do just because it's Tuesday and perhaps a BIOS upgrade might be a good thing to do. This is really modifying the core capabilities of the hardware of your computer. And because of that, you want to think about why you're performing a BIOS upgrade. In most cases, if it's something is not broken on your computer, you probably don't want to go through the process of upgrading the BIOS. Of course, I never seem to follow that particular rule. It's a new version of the BIOS. Let's load it up. Let's see how it works. You'll often find that uh, most people aren't going to do that. It's only propeller heads that get in there and want to see what's different about it. Is there a new setting? What can you do? I'm going to show you today the things you can look through before upgrading to determine if it's really an a really useful thing or even a good thing that you should be doing to your own PC. The upgrades for the BIOS will sometimes add new features and new capabilities to your system. So there may be situations where new hardware is supported. Or when Microsoft Vista came out recently, there were new capabilities of the software and how it integrated with the hardware. And so some BIOS upgrades were able to keep up with that. There's also been cases where new memory requirements have come out, new memory hardware itself. And the BIOS has been updated. The software of the motherboard has been updated so that it can use some of the new memory that's come out. There's also times when a BIOS upgrade is going to fix a problem, going to fix a functional flaw within the hardware itself and how it operates. There will be cases where a BIOS upgrade will improve system stability. It will even tell you exactly what it's doing in the BIOS release notes. We're going to look at those in just a moment. There have been cases where a poorly written BIOS might cause data loss. And that's something you definitely don't want to have happen on your computer. So BIOS very often are tested very, very rigorously. You very rarely see the BIOS become a cause of data loss. So whenever we see that, it's something very unusual that's occurred. Let's talk about troubleshooting and how you can use the BIOS in your troubleshooting process. Whenever you start looking into the BIOS, it's often a last resort. When you have a problem with an application or something's not working quite right with your printer or with a USB drive, you may think that it has something to do with the software. Maybe it's something, some problem with the physical hardware of our computer itself. You may not even consider to yourself that it has something to do with the software that's been written to take advantage of the hardware in your BIOS. And so you'll sometimes upgrade the BIOS as a last ditch effort. Maybe this will help. And it's not a bad idea. We can go through that process to see if an, a BIOS upgrade actually fixed the problem. Uh, it, whenever you look through some of the release notes for the BIOS settings, you'll find that these BIOSes don't have a lot of detailed information in the release notes. And I would bet that there probably isn't a very complete list in the release notes. So upgrading your BIOS may fix a problem that's just not documented anywhere. 
On rare occasions, upgrading the BIOS will be an obvious choice. The hard drive controller BIOS is an important one. It controls the information going to and from a hard drive. And there have been cases with manufacturers' hard drive controllers that I've been using where the BIOS created a problem where it wasn't writing the right information to the disk. Pretty, pretty drastic problem. We found it, and the, the manufacturer sent a new version of the BIOS, and that fixed the entire problem. It's just a simple process of installing the new version of the BIOS. If you ever find a new version of BIOS release notes, uh, there's a lot of great information in there that you can look through. It's going to tell you a lot about what is in this new version and how important it is. There's also included, probably within those release notes, something called a checksum value. This is very useful if you're downloading a file from the internet. You want to be sure that the file that you've downloaded, especially a file as important as a BIOS, is one that you have received and it is an exact duplicate of what is stored on the manufacturer's website. So very often you'll see next to the file or within the release notes something called a checksum. In fact, here is some release notes I took from a my Dell computer. And this is release notes for version A02 of the laptop that I'm using. You can see when it was released. It even tells you for this particular BIOS update, it's talking and referring to different video cards that are in different models of this particular laptop. You can see here's the file name. It's 1735 underscore A02.exe. That's the file that upgrades the BIOS inside this laptop. You could see that it also includes some of those checksums we were talking about. One smaller 16-bit checksum in hexadecimal, uh, hexadecimal 6 echo 30, or a longer version of the checksum called 07A6 6 echo 30. Now, these checksums are useful. What's, what that really comes from is what, what the manufacturer has done is added up all of the, the configuration, all of this file, every byte within this file was added. And at the end of it, it gave us the last 16 or the last 32 bits of what that added up to. There's probably, obviously, this is a very long number, but it only gave us the last few. And what that means is that if any of those bits have changed inside of this file, the checksum that we would calculate on our end would not be the same as this. Now, you can also see there have been a couple of changes in this BIOS update. There was a version number change for this BIOS release and also improve audio quality. Remember what I said earlier about the release notes not always giving you a lot of information? That definitely is not a lot of information. Improve audio quality. We aren't sure how they improved it. We aren't sure what the quality of the improvement was associated with or what it may be specific to, but we know if we put this, if we're having problems with our audio today, we may consider putting this version of our BIOS and updating it on our laptop. That would be a, a perfect way to start troubleshooting with this. Well, let's look at that checksum, 6 echo 30 and this longer one, 07A6, 6 echo 30. Now, I've already downloaded the BIOS that I have. And you can see here's the version A02. That's the one right there that we're going to find a checksum for. Now, I have a, a neat little checksum, probably overkill for what we're doing right here. But this is a great little checksum program called FSUM. And it's a front end, a graphical front end for a very common checksum program that you would see on Unix or Linux called FSUM. And if I double click, you'll see that it brings up a Windows front end. And this actually calculates 96 different checksums, depending on what you're looking for. Now, we only want to really look at one, maybe two, if we're really interested in looking at both of those checksums. And what we're going to do is really load a file up in here. So let's let's do that. Let's hit this uh, plus sign here and add a file into our list. The file that we want is this one called 1735A02. Let's open that up. And there it is. It's on my desktop. Now the two checksums that we're interested in looking at, the ones that it gave us in that release notes is called sum 16 and sum 32. So I'm only going to select those two. You can start to see why I said this is a bit overkill for what we're doing. But uh, sometimes you get into these propeller head modes where you want to calculate a lot of different checksums. There's one button you press here that says calculate hashes. And when I calculate that, it comes out to our sum 16 is 6 echo 30, and our sum 32 is 07 alpha 6, 6 echo 30. And if I flick, flip very quickly back, you can see 6 echo 30, 07 
alpha 6, 6 echo, 3, 0. So by looking at those two values, I can feel pretty certain that the checksum that I've got in my little checksum program, the file that I've downloaded, I can be really, really certain that this file matches the file that's over on the, on the website from my manufacturer. So now I can feel comfortable installing this because I know I downloaded a copy and its current version is one that matches what the manufacturer said it should be. Before we do any upgrade to the BIOS, there's a couple of precautions, a few precautions I want to tell you about. One is that it would be nice if we had a backup of the current BIOS configuration. I mentioned this in an earlier video. If you don't have a printer that's connected to your system that allows you to do a print screen when you're in the BIOS configuration itself, you may want to go through and write down with a pencil and a pen all of the settings and what they're set to inside of your BIOS. Now there's only about 25 or 30 probably that are different in your system from default or the ones that you're interested in saving. So just make sure you write those down. It doesn't take any time at all to be able to do that. And trust me, when you upgrade BIOS sometimes, you may find that new settings are there and old settings have changed. You want to go, sure, go through and verify that everything is exactly the way you left it prior to doing the upgrade. You also might want to have a backup of the current BIOS software that you have today installed in your computer. Uh, I'm fortunate that in the case of Dell, they will keep older versions of the BIOS available on their website. So I can go back there and download A02, A01, A00 if I want to, just to try to downgrade my system should I run into any problems with the new version. Now, it's not as easy to get those as you might think. Dell's very good about that, but other manufacturers of motherboards don't always keep BIOS software on their, their website, at least not every version. So if you download one, you may want to store it somewhere and make sure you identify it in case you need it in the future. That way, when you're ready to do the next BIOS upgrade, you have the existing one already on a hard drive stored away somewhere. Stick it on a backup drive. Now also, and this is what got me once, is that you want to have a very reliable power source. When you're performing a BIOS upgrade, you are essentially removing the existing brain of your computer that tells it what to do when you power it on, and you're replacing it. This is a very critical process, and you want to be sure that it's able to perform that process without any interruption. If you happen to have your system remove the BIOS configuration and before it's had a chance to put a new BIOS in, suddenly you lose power, you're going to find that you have what we call a boat anchor. It's a brick. It is now worthless to you because now nothing can start that computer back up again so that you can resume that process. It doesn't know what to do when you power it on. So you'll often find with a laptop or even a desktop system, it's going to check and make sure that there's power to be able to do this, especially with a laptop. It will tell you if you're running on a battery, it will say, I'm sorry, you can't perform this BIOS upgrade until you plug in to AC power. And I can see that there's AC power. It knows to check for that. So if you live in Florida and it's the summertime, you may not want to do this in the afternoon when all the thunderstorms come through. Do this when you know your power is going to be very, very solid and very secure. The process for upgrading the BIOS is different for every manufacturer. Some manufacturers can run the initial BIOS installation from a Windows desktop. Others require that you create a boot floppy or a boot CD. So you're going to want to look at the documentation to see what it says. When you download the updated BIOS from the manufacturer's web page, make sure you look through exactly the, what it says to do. And notice that I say you're downloading it from the manufacturer of your PC. Now the BIOS so as we've seen, we've seen BIOS is from Phoenix, a company called Phoenix. We've seen another one called AMI BIOS. We could go to the AMI webpage. We could go to the Phoenix webpage. That's not the BIOS you want to install. Very often, manufacturers will make customized tweaks to the BIOS. It's very specific to their motherboards and their hardware. So make sure if you have a Dell computer that you go to the Dell website. If you have a Compaq computer that you go to the Compaq website to download the, the BIOS that's very specific for the version of the system that you have. And when your BIOS upgrade starts up, it will often check the hardware that you're running on. If it doesn't match, it won't let you do an upgrade. It's very specific. 
follow the directions that come with your BIOS. Very often you have to perform things step one, step two, step three, and step four. And as long as you do it in that order, everything will work just fine. And what I'm really talking about is me. I'll very often download something and I'll just want to run it right away. I just start her up. Let's just upgrade the BIOS. I don't need to read any of that documentation. That documentation contains some very important information of exactly what you should do and in what order. Make sure you read through that. Some BIOS upgrades are, are very, very specific about where you run them from. So as you read through these documentations, just make sure you're installing from the same place. Let me show you what it takes to run a BIOS installation on my computer. I've downloaded a new version of my BIOS. This is the version A03. So this is a new version for my particular laptop. If I double click on it, first Windows is going to tell me you're running uh, some software here that I don't know about. Are you sure you want to run this? Well, I happen to know I've done my checksum check and I know that I downloaded it from the Dell website. I feel pretty okay about running it on my system. So I'm going to allow it access. And you can see it comes up and says this is the Dell Computer Flash BIOS upgrade. And uh, the system I'm upgrading is a Studio 1735. This is revision A03 in this BIOS upgrade. Now I already happen to have upgraded to A03. But if I wanted to upgrade again, all I have to do is press the Continue button. What's going to happen at this point is my system will shut down normally. It will restart itself. But before the operating system can load, it will begin a process of clearing out the existing BIOS and writing new BIOS software to it. And it, would, it tells you, don't power off during this process. Don't touch anything during this process. It's very important to keep in mind. And you should follow those directions. Don't get anywhere near the keyboard. Don't get anywhere near the power supply. Don't get anywhere near the wall jack. Don't touch anything. Very, very important when it's performing that BIOS upgrade. Now, because it does this when the system boots up, I can't show it to you in the screen. But this is really the most boring part about doing an upgrade. You hit the Start button and you just sit back and you watch it go. There's not much more to do than that. It very often will give you updates on the screen of exactly how it's proceeding, tells you exactly what memory uh, setting it's, it's writing to and reading from at that particular moment. And then once it's done, it says, remove all of the floppy disks, any of the CD-ROMs from your computer, hit a key, and we'll reboot and start your operating system back up again. And if everything's gone well, it'll start up just like it's normally done. You really won't be able to tell much of a difference at all. If there are problems, you may want to have to go into the BIOS configuration using your F2 key or your delete key or whatever it is for your system and check the configuration and make sure that that configuration is exactly the one you left when before you did that BIOS upgrade. You can start to see now why it's really important to have a backup copy or a copy of information that you've written down prior to doing that upgrade. In review, we've looked at why you should do a BIOS upgrade to start with. We've also talked about how you can use the BIOS to help troubleshoot problems, perhaps with your audio, as it was with the Dell BIOS that we saw earlier. I also talked about all those precautions about power, not touching any keys, and making sure you have backups. Very important when doing a BIOS upgrade. And finally showed you just how easy it is. When you finally start the upgrade process, there's really not much to it at all. We've got plenty more videos on CompTIA a certification on our website. I've got message boards out there. I've got a study guide wiki that I've set up. Feel free to visit it out there at freeaplus.com.